Okay, for join, people joining this live stream, we are in part of a somewhat high-pressure series of meetings about 12.1 functionality, um, which will be continuing over the next few days and beyond. Uh, right now, we're talking about geometry and graphics, and these are these are complicated agendas, and we may or may not get through everything in the time we have available here. All right, first thing, shaders. This is exciting. How do I see this? If you use 12.1 prototype, it should just work. So if you go to the reference page, there should oh, be wow. an example if you, for tune shading, for instance. Shading. Then you could pick, you know, just pick any example you can see here. So I can just go here. So, so this is now in addition to. So if. You, Okay, so if I put in something more complex, do we have a torus primitive here? No. Um, okay, we certainly have a dodecahedron. We do. That's not oh, going to be go that away. exciting because that's just going to have flat. I see it's going to be flashy there. Right. Or like the other, you know, not data, you can say torus not image data. I should give that. Oops. What do I say here? Geometry, Trefile not geometry or something? Yes. What should I ask for here? I think it should be graphic. Um, I think it have an graphic. Mesh region? Mesh region will work. It's taking its time. I think this one have too many polygons. Okay, so let me try another kind of shading. That's not a very good shading. I want to try. Oh, let's try half. Let's try hatch. Hatch shading. That sounds good. Now, why? Why? Well, that's revealing its ribbing. Okay, stipple shading. How about that? That should be cool. It should look like the Wall Street Journal. Actually, if you, yeah. That's a pretty weird effect when you rotate it. I don't know whether I've ever, I mean, because it's, because what I'm seeing there, the stippling is remaining in the same place, even as the geometry is moving. Yeah, it's but the up. question is where the light source sits. So it, it's like a light source that's shooting out pieces of stipple? No, but. Well, what is it? Because that's what it seems like. It seems like it's fixed relative to the light sources. The stipple pattern is fixed relative to the light sources. Yes, it's fixed relative to the window screen. We can make it, um, I mean, roughly follow the, the, the curvature, the, the, the geometry. That, you know, then when you do the rotation, you'll actually work. But it's, we thought that the, the stippling effect is a kind of a static effect you want to apply to a static object than actually an object you rotate. It was the balance between the performance and the course we want to apply. Hold on a second. I want to see something here. This would be very exciting if this actually works. I had no idea. I was waiting for this for like years. Mm. Yes. What? Yeah, no, put um, 0 0.1 or something. I, I still haven't done the, the default case. Wait a minute. Why, why, why doesn't it? I want to make much finer hatching. I haven't yet implemented that density. So after the design, we'll, we'll actually do that. Currently, just taking the angle as a prototype. Okay. No, there's no way we're going to call it tiling. Not a chance. By the way, we still got crazy background noise. I don't know what it is. So you take an image. Okay. Can I do that in 3D? Uh, no, it's currently just working 2D. We should be able to do that in 3D. 
And what determines the size relative to the thing? Right, so in principle, it takes a second argument, which should be the size. So we are still working on that. I see it's the inverse somehow. Yes, so it's what we have to fix in terms of that. Currently, we're taking the, the density, so it should be the size of the inverse of it. Okay, so this idea that we're going to have all these different functions seems wrong. This is more like image effect, right? Am I making sense? Yes, we went down to that road of just having one function, but they are really different and they have different specifications. It's That's different also true in image effect as well. I mean, how how locked down are these particular kinds of functionality? Do, do you understand my question? Not really. Well, I mean, if I were to look over the past 25 years at what kind of shading people have used, right? Stippling, one certainly heard of. You know, cross-hatching, one certainly heard of. But you can't have hatch and hatching, right? I mean, these somehow have to be unified. I don't understand why this is even different. I mean, the hatching... Um, uh, Right, so the, the hash shading, that's why all of them end with shading, it's essentially the effect of, of the light on the object, right? It's, it's that shading effect, right? I see. And As opposed to the hatching, which is the intrinsic property of the object. Yes. But could you not have a hatching? I mean, could this have hatching? What? Where you Could the torus itself have a hatching pattern? Didn't update. You. The screen is not. What's... The torus have a hatching pattern. So you mean during the drawing or? Geometry? Oh no no I I understand I, even if I, your the screen is not updating but oh I'm sorry. the question I, is I, I went on mute for a second yeah okay um, no what so, I'm saying. Yeah, right. So, so can, can you have something that's intrinsic to that surface? We were discussing that. There are all kinds of other spec problems. It's related to what we do with um, textures, and we're going to look at that. We were hoping to get to that now, but we'll be for 12.2, where we're going to look at various uh, texture mappings, easy to use, standardized texture mapping to advanced Right, so I, was, I mean, for, for example, so let, let's talk about this for a second. Okay, so f first point. But is you could have a notion of hatching as well that is cuts out of a sort of a 3D shape of things. Yes, because otherwise, I mean, obviously, if you just try to, you know, comb the hair, so to speak, you're going to get horrible homotopy issues, right? Right. And so we definitely don't want to set ourselves up for that, that presumably. Right, but, but it's unavoidable. You get those impossible issues with texture mapping. I mean, you, you. I understand that. I mean, as I understand it, there are two fundamental approaches to texture mapping. One is, you, you know, when you have a, uh, you know, you can either un unroll the surface and try and take your 2D thing and stamp it onto that unrolled surface, mm -hmm. or you can say, you know, I've got in each of the three directions, X, Y, Z, or something, I, I am projecting some image onto the texture, onto the object from that direction. That's sort of. Correct. You know, so the standard texture mappings are like that, like sphere mapping, cylinder mapping, cube mapping, and so on. <clears throat> that's that's the projecting on, you know, from the surrounding images, basically. Um, right. So actually, there's several comments on our live stream here. Um, complaint that the tiling thing is really filling, which it certainly is. Um, a uh, question from Ali asking, a new functions coming for polyhedron, polyhedron intersection function to see if um, two polyhedra are colliding. Yeah, what, what are we doing there for drawing the seam line between polyhedra? Did you understand my question? Yes. As far as we are concerned, the polyhedra is a solid. Now, there is a confusion in the old literature of polyhedra because they couldn't do solid modeling properly. 
So they just intersect two surfaces. And then the question is, what do you talk about? Are you talking about the surface or are you talking about the solid? So hold on. If we, if we just take graphics 3D um, of two icosahedra, for example, I would imagine I can say like 0 0.5, 0 0.8 or something here. Oops, 0 0.0 for instance. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so in there, you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. In there, clearly we've got color difference, but we don't have, I mean, you know, two, two things we don't have in this picture. One is we don't have the ability, I mean, I could go to an opacity here, but we wouldn't have the beautiful stuff that, that you know, is in old books and so on, where the uh, uh, obscured lines are, are dotted in the, in the opacity. Am I making sense? Right. Um, I mean, is that anything that we're going to get in, in, along the lines of this photorealistic rendering stuff? A mm -hmm. non-photorealistic rendering? Okay, so that's a total mess. <sighs> So you, you you see what I'm talking about? I mean, so like I've got two questions here. First of all, the seam line there, and second of all, the you know the dotting of these obscured surfaces, uh, obscured um, uh, edges. Um, that would be that's a totally different project. Okay, fine. All right. I'm, I'm just asking. I'm just trying to understand. And if you write your own, I mean, it's possible it's doable with Z-buffers too, but if you write your own um, hidden surface elimination algorithm and full data structures for that, I think you can kind of do whatever you want, but you're not going to be using a lot of graphics libraries then. So it's... Okay, so now what am I doing here? Is this Is this working, whatever this is doing? So that, that directive applies <coughs> to everything that comes after it, right? But somehow it applies to things before it here. No, yeah. no, no I, I gave it a style. Oh, I didn't I see that. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so this is, this is basically, it is being shot by little stipples from its light sources, correct? Because those stipples don't move as I move the object, right? They're fixed to the light sources. Right, or right. fixed to the screen, yes. Okay, which is kind of weird. Not what I would have expected. When you rotate the object, yes, but we can change that if needed. But it's just that uh, for this stippling effect, what you expect is a fixed object, which the stippling gives you the 3D effect. Right. So we just had to make a balance, as I said before, between the performance Right, so we can make it follow the, you know, use the actual geometry, the normal and the rest, and it's get expensive and similar also to the problem of texture mapping, right? You'll end up to that too. It'd be kind of expensive to figure out what's the right mapping and do the, the right operation. Okay. Hey, so wait a minute. The, um, uh, uh, is this a GPU play? There's this whole thing. I, I mean, yes. I, I noticed yes. Yutsu is on this call. So can you explain yes. what's actually going on here? Um, yeah, currently it were typeset as a, 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 some uh, surface pairs, uh, which contains like a GPU shaders. It's called a GS long shader. And we take that and uh, we explain that, render that. And it will use GPU directly. So wait a minute. I mean, okay. So I'm trying to understand. So, so for example, well, what's the most impressive of these shaders? I don't know what these look like. I mean, if I say the Gooch shading. I mean, so if you look at the documentation of the page, we have some example there. We kind of try to give an idea. Okay. You know, one, one key part of those uh, shaders, non photorealistic shaders, is that there is a light effect. And our light system, right, kind of doesn't actually show more the actual effect, they say you need to actually change the light to a more directional light to be able to reproduce the effect. Yeah, so um, I have a question, and I assume that the attached cell that we are hopefully working on for 3D graphics will have light changing stuff in it. Do you know who's working on that? I do not. 
I didn't um, know. I didn't know we were working on that for three D graphics. Yeah, it's it would be good to know. It's not something that's going through my group right now, uh, just because of other priorities. Um, so yeah, I, I I think that I think that it's in the queue, but it's not actively being worked on because of. So other you know, which we in, should which include other attached cells. By the way, right. Maybe we should add this since uh, to young Noah's list of uh, um, attached cell activities. This might be a rather easy one compared to some of the other ones he's trying to do. Um, I don't. Yeah, well, I, I, I think for light sources, the most difficult thing is figuring out a proper interface. The, oh, I know. The, the mechanics of actually implementing it are straightforward, but the interface may not be. Well, the one thing we could certainly implement easily is is um, just selecting particular cases, just being able to reselect, you know, just being able to click through 10 different light source configurations. Sure, absolutely. That'd be trivial. So can, can we feed that, please? I, I'm not sure who Noah is now working with. He was working with Brett, but I thought that had been moved. What? When did that move? Because, uh, well, we were talking about him working with Jeremy instead. Um, okay. But Tim is the one that's developed a lot of editing tools. Okay. Well, you guys sort it out. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter who he's working with. I mean, the, what matters is that there's a good review cycle because he was working with Billy in design to actually get these um, palettes, you know, uh, iterated. I see. Um, he showed the, the thing he has for drawing tools, which really looks quite nice. Um, okay. In any case, let's let's come back to this. So, so c can somebody take that? Is uh, Andrea, you're you're here? Yes. Yes, I can take that. Thank you. Um, uh, okay. So, explain this to me a little bit more. So, this. So, the, all these these are there are many things one can do with shaders. So the. Let's let's start at one end. Let's start at the GPU side, since you asked about that. Yes. Um, OpenGL, Direct3D, and Metal all have effectively programmable language that allows you to tell how to, you know, I know, um, all right, you know, what color every pixel is going to have, and and those are little programs that is very good for developers, but it's totally useless for develop for for you know for end users. To, Program those sure. things, and it needs to interface with our actual rendering loop. So what we've done is to curate it, an initial set of such shaders that we think are useful and explainable. Right. There is an obviously an infinite set of possible ones, but these are ones um, that we think are useful. One that we hope to get to eventually is, for instance, material, and I, uh, you know. Sure. Which, which can give reasonable looking material. Right. But this seems more important in terms of visualization and illustration capabilities, which is what we more do than like game scenes. And stuff. Yeah, right, I know. A furry, furry sphere is amusing, but not necessarily what we care about immediately. Right, but the, even if it's like gold or some kind of metal or things like that, we, we'll get right. all that, but it's the scene. Although I thought that many of those things were, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know what the state of the art is these days, but I mean, it used to be there were just you know Fong shading parameters and things like that. There wasn't it wasn't that difficult. The specification of most of the materials, other than things like fur and so on, were not that complicated. They were just it, it is pretty complicated, and we gonna okay. if we're gonna be up sort of in a license situation where we need to get enough of that quality material properties to be able to emulate them. Can't remember exactly what the details was. Apparently, Mitsubishi has built the biggest such materials database. I mean, there's different approach to do that. I mean, there is a physical base model, right, which we we can use, or there is the database, you know, one based on you know pure data we can use. So there is those two different, at least two different implementation with prototype. So, right. but nevertheless, so even if it uses GPU underneath, which means it will go fast on all platforms, even if it uses slightly different shader language. What's this all platforms? I mean, depending on what kind of GPU. How, no, how is no, Apple is using something called Metal. They they disc, they are not maintaining their OpenGL very good anymore. And Windows is using Direct. They're not maintaining their OpenGL at all anymore. 
Um, oh, really? I didn't know it was that bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah, What's happened to so somebody was telling me about this Vulcan thing? What's that? That's yet a different. That's sort of platform. Open OpenGL's future play, but not something that we're looking at supporting in the short run. Um, Vulcan's uh, big breakout platform is Linux, but. It has a software rendering problem, and software rendering matters to us because we run on servers that don't necessarily have video cards. So walk me through this. So what what are the actual things? So that we have it, what, but but Roger's core point is that these shaders they're written in shader languages. I know the language is actually different for I metal know. and for OpenGL and for Direct Three D. Right. So we are giving certain parameterized versions of these for particular name shading configurations. Right. Well, that that, are... that, that's the plan. But right now, all that we have is OpenGL. I mean, we're designing things that we think we could deploy, you know, identically on Direct3D and Metal. Um, okay, there are a bunch of comments on our live stream, which I want to, want to ask about here. Um, are new functions coming for polyhedron? Somebody's asking about polyhedron intersection function to see if two polyhedron... Polyhedron right. intersection function is um, region intersection. So if I take two random polyhedra, I don't even know what the parameters are. What, how many? Oh, wow. I don't know how many it gave there. What do, I, what do I put in as the parameters here? So 10 of those, and I take another random polyhedron uh, 14 of those, and now I say, so what am I going to do here? I'm just going to say graph region intersection. Percent 83 and percent 84. Okay, and now if I say graphics 3D of that. Okay, I can't tell if it's, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that's right. But so what? what's the, hold on a second. Um, region intersection, see if two polyhedra are colliding. What well, seems to work? Does that did that not work before 12.1? Yes, it did. Okay. Um, but yeah, but there could be sort of a a um, you know, there's a spatial relation. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So the question here being asked is, it wants a Boolean to say, say if two random polyhedra are intersecting or colliding. Right. And so I think we have that as a spatial relation already. So we, we have region, well, what would it be? Region. I thought we had a region intersecting queue or some such other thing. Region disjoint. Queue? Not queue, because it sometimes needs to give conditions back. Queue functions become liars when there are parameters involved. Yeah, I understand. So, okay, so if I say region disjoint percent 83, percent 84, why doesn't that work? Why doesn't that work? Well, there was yeah. a set of functions in 12 where we didn't complete the full implementation. That's possible. Okay, that well, so that's the issue, I think, here. That is what our user is asking about. Okay, so the question is, when will region disjoint for polyhedra work? It must know what it, it must know the answer here. I mean, it clearly could work. In the very worst case, it finds out whether the region intersection is, is empty. Yes. So we'll, sounds we'll like make... a bug here. We'll make it work. It's more complicated than the bug, but we'll make it work. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, so now um, uh, Bob is saying you need differential geometry to do texture mapping, yeah. Um, vector field on a curved surface, like drawing a weather map on a globe. That is coming separately with, with Geographics 3D, which I doubt is in this review, is it? No. No. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, okay, so I was asking um, about performance and whether you could put this in a manipulate, and I just demoed that. You certainly can. Um, uh, someone's asking about ray tracing. You know, we've thought about putting ray tracing into the system for 30 years. 
And every time we seriously think about it, it's like nobody really cares. Is that a fair statement, Roger? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, in other words, you, there are system. There are, you know, if we've got good exporting, then you know, if you really want a completely photorealistic thing, you know, render it in something which has really good well, ray tracing. Yeah, one thing that we said now, we we do actually have good export functions, both to RenderMan and RenderMan has very high quality renderer and PovRay or or dot POV. So, yeah. and we're writing the work. I'm sorry, the workflows. Yes, that showcases those those things. So, if I were to take, for example, this kind of thing, if I were to take that, for instance, and I were to say, um, export that to, well, let's just, I just want to see what it looks like. Export that to what is it called, Povre? Yeah. Actually, I want to take that thing to POV. Is that going to be just a total disaster? Oh, what the heck's that? That doesn't look very good. That doesn't look right. Well, I think it was right, except there's no shapes. Exactly. Now, maybe maybe the opacity messed it up or something. But I can't see why it would have done. I doubt that. This is probably... It's probably really old for we, we haven't updated to add the support of the new constructor. Yeah, that's my guess too. Yeah. By the way, I should say on the ray tracing thing, as uh, as real time ray tracing starts to become a thing, I mean, you two and I have been keeping an eye on this, and I, you know, I haven't really floated it as a major priority yet because we have a lot of other stuff in the queue, which. You know, I think rightly takes priority, but it's something we're keeping an eye on. Yeah. Fair enough. So NVIDIA is trying to introduce real-time ray tracing. And it's right now, it's to a large extent, I think it's a means of selling their cards, the high-end cards. Well, can you blame them? Yeah. No, I can't blame them. But but I think that that will migrate sort of over time, that will migrate into uh, a broader set of cards and all of that. And Yes, and maybe okay. even even on the Mac, but they're not using NVIDIA cards, so, you know. Yeah, I wish they'd make peace with NVIDIA. would help. Um, anyway, the uh, uh, can somebody, Andrea, please take a note, the POV thing. Who, who, who gets to fix the POV thing? Just make it a bug report. It's still in the same team. Okay, yeah, fine. Take it. Okay. Um, but, but it should be a bug report if we want to keep track of all this. Okay, so I will send that to, after I file it, I will send it to the people here. Um, okay. Try Do, rib. Yeah, yeah, just make it a bug and QA will. I mean, it. It, I think it's just the style, style and opacity. If you just put sphere or stuff, it will just work. The, the parser doesn't manage to get all the wrapper. Oh, the style, the wrapper? And probably with sphere, so a cosidron will probably not work. In other words, this has been poorly maintained. Yes. Magnificent. Okay. I don't know what all of that is, but that looks pl plausible. Looks more plausible than the other things we saw. Okay, fine. So there are just bugs there. Okay, so let's come back to talking about this rendering stuff. Oh boy, we got so much to go through. I, as I said, I thought, um, wow, okay, all kinds of exciting things here. Mm. Wow, okay. Uh, what on earth is that? Web region search is a very bizarre name for that. Okay, in any case, sorry. Um, let's let's no, go back up here. I do web audio search. I, I'm aware, but I just think it's very, it's it's a and web image search. I know and that, Roger. Search. I know that, Roger, except that we're not usually used for, to the idea of, you know, it's like the thingy verse is not the region verse, uh, although I admit that. But it is. Thing. It is. Well, we call it geometry search first, but that's too broad. So. Uh, we need to look at that. Okay, let's, and we're back to shaders here. Okay, so the first question is, 
what is the space of name shaders? Is, the, is this a small piece of the space of name shaders or is this a, a decent chunk of the space of name shaders? This is a decent chunk of the non-NPR non shaders. Okay. And if we look at physically realistic shaders, then what do we see? We see a bunch of material property shaders, but then do we see a whole lot of other stuff? The physically base are roughly effect of material, so it's pretty much the material ones. So you... Okay. So, but to me, these really feel like effects of some kind. Now, you're concerned that they have parameters, right? Is yes. that correct? So I, I think these should be in some association or something. The parameters should be there. I just don't think we should have a bunch of different functions for, you know, random, weird, you know, shaders. I mean, especially these are pretty, pretty arbitrary. I mean, I don't... What do you... I mean, in that universe of shader, when you are there, the, these are not arbitrary. I mean, this is kind of the standard one, right? The tune shading is a standard, you know, it's kind of the elementary one. Right? Well, okay. So, well, Roger, you've obviously thought about this. So you, you have come to the conclusion that we should actually have these as named special function-like things in the system. I started exactly like you do, saying exactly what you said. If Charles recall. Yes. And it <clears throat> took months to convince him that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, fine. I'll see if I can perform better. Um no, but, so, but seriously, so, so go ahead. Here's, here's one question which uh and I wasn't inside this discussion either, so you can answer it for my benefit as well. Um one problem that I see with having differently named things is that they can't cooperate with one another. Uh, that, you know, you can't have something that's half-tone gooched or something like that. Why not? Is, does well, it, I assume you can put them does, both does, in does, the... Does it work? Does, does it actually work? I, mm. I had assumed that it wouldn't work. It won't no, work. It, won't it will work. not work. It, it won't work. I mean, it, it, it is essentially like, like the hatching, right? It is, a, you know, you, you cover the stuff with hatching, but if you want to give two different directives which are opposite, you shouldn't expect it to work. Okay, so I mean, the, the question is, is it, would it match? If, if you were to run the shader code in the GPU for one of these things and you run the shader code for the other thing on each polygon, what does it actually do? Same as we do for color. If you do red, blue, blue take precedence. That's pretty much it. And is that generally true for what the GPU would do? Or is it is it like it just starts from a blank slate and then fills in whatever shading it fills in? Or can it take the state that comes out of one shader and put it into another shader? Uh, yes, kind of like a status. So, so then you are answering that a gooch halftone makes sense. Or are you not? I mean, you get what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it seems to me that... Uh, sure, I mean, we can combine guess, them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my guess is that composability is possible, but you have to be careful how you develop the shaders to make sure you don't... Actually but I don't... I mean, back to what you said, uh, I don't see how that changes whether we have separate symbols or they're one symbol with many string names in it. I don't see how that changes that at all. That well, I think it's slightly nicer to compose it. If Actually, I think it's nicer to compose it if they are um, separate symbols because you can imagine some functional composition type thing. No, but, but, but see, it's, it's the effect on the surface. Right? We cannot define two different effects on the surface and guess that you know what will be there at the end. Right? Right. Especially that I mean, we, are, we are playing with the light. Okay, right. what does a shader, what is the input to a shader? In the shader? But these guys, these, these, I mean, so. I mean, the, I mean, the, the, the shader is the implementation. Here we are thinking more about describe giving a directive for an effect on the surface. It's really and not dependent on the shader. For me, the shader is more the language we use now to implement it. In 20 years, maybe no one will use any more shaders. Fair enough. No, but but these these ones that are called you know XXX shading right now, what they all use is basically um, I think luminosity component of the computed uh, color value on the surface. 
And that computed color value on the surface has gone through a what we call our standard shader in the language. So wait a minute. So, so what this is doing is it's taking the 2D image, is that correct? That has been generated by doing the you know 3D to 2D transformation. And it's taking that, and it is, in this case, line half-toning it. Is that correct? That's right. So, but it, it, what I'm saying is that it's used a, a, an initial, the value that drives this effect. Okay, is so you, that luminosity value, right, so it comes out of that color computation. You're, you're saying there's a been, scalar field. There's effectively a scalar field at each point of the, of the, of the 2D uh, projected object yeah everything is 2d when we look at it like this sure no but i mean the shaders operate in the 2d representation or the well, 3D? Uh, well, the shaders it's, must be using normals as well yes it's, so it's, it's on the it's on the 3d object so essentially yeah. what what we do with you know we take the at it uh, you know at it point on the, the surface the, the 3d object we you know we have a luminosity a, a value uh, like in the case the case of the tune shading we actually Quantize it so we roughly put it in a discrete set, and this from that discrete set that we you know we render that you know to the screen. Roughly we project it in two D, so you have the object. Okay. Okay, but but so so just so I understand the the function. What does it get at every point of the surface, every point of the three D surface? It gets. What it's getting some luminosity value that's deduced from the from the lighting from, from yes yeah, from lighting from guru shading like we like we discussed ten years ago when we did six or yes whatever. in this case we use the font shading which is more oh, okay well, so we use an improved version of that font yes. okay and that, that which means, is which is effectively assuming certain material properties because it's got an exponent right kind of yeah it's sort of all fake but it's. The, the difference between Guru and Fong is that it interpolates the normal across the surface patches. Yes. I remember whereas that. the uh, Guru, you know, uses, uh, doesn't, it interpolates the color value across them as opposed to normals. Right. Okay. Let's, let's zoom out for a second detail. what we're trying to achieve here. So, I mean, the first point is, Okay, so one thing that's still really bothering me is the fact that this is locked to the screen as opposed to locked to the object. Well, we can fix that. I mean, well, can we, or is it is it a performance issue? Um, we can fix that right now. It's just a, an internal option. Uh, the performance is essentially to based on the object. We essentially will have to use the normal and the computation, and it's, there is a cost to pay for that. As okay, well as what do people possible. think is, I mean, to me, it seems very bizarre that it's locked. So, so Sandra on our live stream is asking whether this will work. Do we even have a, we didn't even have something called, oh, we do. Yeah, it will work. Really? Yeah. Um, put a value on the hatching. 0.5, just the angle. 0.5? What the heck is that? Wait a minute. Oh, that's a plot. That's an ordinary plot. Yeah, that's a. Yes. Oh, that's really cool, isn't it? That's really cool. If you if you only had the hatching a little bit more, so so why is so what about half toning here? And what about? I mean, there are many different hatching patterns, right? I mean, Tim could give us a whole, uh, you know, collection of different. Yes, hatch if if you open the hatching, we have been working on that. I mean, it's it's kind of infinite, and we try to restrict that to a small set. What's this? What? Oh, maybe I'm looking at the wrong. No, that's the that's... right. What's what? Oh, how is that possible? Is there a hatching new or something? Uh, no, I was just looking at that function this morning. Can you just send me the page? Um, yes. I really want to see this because this is incredibly cool. Um, I mean, this is really useful. I, I mean, the, the one in 3D is amusing, but this is really useful. I've wanted this for years. Um, Bob on our live stream is saying, it's the half toning would be useful for sending this to printers from the 1950s. Not only 1950s, you know, even 1970s. Um, 
Yeah. Um. Okay, I don't know what happened to your page. Something is wrong with your page there. Okay, so now what what is the parameterization? Um, so essentially, we first thought that the, it'll be the angle. We assume first that everything is just parallel line. That's the standard hatching. But we should have names for these things like cross hatching, herringbone. When I get it from CVS, I get the correct page. Okay, well, something's wrong. Okay. Andrea, could you report that to Roger, please? Like the other Roger. Okay, the other Roger. Okay. <laughs> Yes, because this Roger is right here. <laughs> um, the okay, okay. So, but right, you agree that there should be names for this, like herringbone and so on. Yes. Yes, we can have names. And, and obviously, name. the, yeah, string names. But so, how do I get something which is much finer hatching? Uh, we haven't yet implemented it. We okay, but so so this is so this is still fictional here. Yes. Kind of illustration. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. All right. I, I really think, by the way, that emphasizing these, getting these 2D things working really, really well is super worthwhile. Um, okay. But so, I don't have a problem with this concept of hatching here with string names in, in, inside it. I, the tiling name is just absolutely not going to make it. So let's take a look at what that even is. So that is, you, you've got an object, and you're filling with that thing. Right? Right. Yes. So they're called, what were they called in PDF and SVG? Pattern. Pattern. <laughs> Do you like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, maybe they were called tiling pattern. I can't remember now. There was pattern filling or rectangular tiling. Right. That's pretty weird, pattern filling. Um, I mean, filling would be better. Oh, what the heck is that? What is filling? Well, the the concept in oh, that's an option. It's an option for for yeah. Uh, we know what filling is. Oh, that filling. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, there is already a filling. Sure. And it's what you use on the plot upstairs. So it's... Yes. Okay. So so we need a name for essentially taking these patches and tessellating these patches. Correct. Yes. And that name should also work for the 3D case, presumably, where you can also presumably tessellate patches to cover po uh, some polygonal sur polygonalized surface. Am I right? Yeah, so I, th that leads to the same discussion we just had about surface, uh, wrapping surfaces on top of objects. Right, that, that required the texture mapping plus other more. No, I, I agree, I agree. We're not gonna get it instantly. I just wanna get the design the same. Because it's extremely non-trivial to see how you do the patches, given that you're wrapping something, you know, the rectangular hello pattern around, you know, tile around the trefoil knot. How does it possibly work? Exactly. Right. Where are the seams? How does it all work? And that's going to be a mess. Yes. Um, but I think that what we're going to do. I although, mean, although, sorry, your carve out thing where the thing is is sculpted out from a 3D, you know, Swiss cheese or whatever it is, whatever the texture is, right? If we were to sculpt this out of Swiss cheese, it would have an implied texture. It would. We would have to do the experiments and see whether it actually is useful. I mean, it's I mean, presumably going to look like a photorealistic thing of somebody taking, you know, pumice rock or something. And, um, you know, I, and I still, you know, with anything visual, we better prototype and test before we... No, I agree. Okay, but 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 in the two D case, 
there's still many degrees of freedom. If you imagine tessellating something, well, again, it's it, no, I guess not. I guess it's a stamp. Is that correct? I mean, you, you basically have a tessellation and you're stamping out of the tessellation this thing. Is that correct? Um, yes. So, I mean, what about the possibility of tessellated? Since that would give us, in the case where somebody wanted to have graphics of tessellated of, now, I don't know what shapes you can have here that that will tessellate, so to speak. I mean, one thing that I pushed for early on, and, and I'm, I'm just a question of time before you come up with the same idea here, okay. which is which is that we should, you know, that we could have, you know, more regular, semi-regular tessellations. But it very much complicates the design. I understand, um, but what is looking the tessellation at what you're using right but, now? But, but the thing is also the goal, right? I mean, tessellation, so essentially you want to draw it, a tessellated surface. It have pretty much nothing to do with the okay, purpose guys, of actually guys, nothing. Guys, could you explain to me? You've got a unit cell here, and you are tessellating with that unit cell. What is the tessellation that you are doing with that unit cell? In the case of those hellos, it was tessellating, right? That is doing, what is that doing? That's simply, that's doing some kind of uh, re rectangular tessellation, right? It's taking yes. the angle. It's, it's always doing it's rectangular, rectangular tessellation. Tessellations. Okay, so, so it is a tessellation, but it's just a square tessellation, basically. Yes. A deformed square tessellation. But if I were to take, for example, here, if instead of hello there, I were to take like an, I, I see, if I were to take graphics of disk, for example, then it would take the square disk. That was a little weird. The, the square disk form, and I see, and tessellate those, and then cookie cutter the thing out of that tessellated form. Right? Yes. Um. Uh, okay. So your your point is, Roger, don't don't sign up for full tessellation because otherwise we're being doing Kepler tessellations and who knows what you know Kepler tilings and who knows what else. Yeah. Or whatever. You know, but, and I I think you know looking at sort of you know one thing that I, it was useful also for us to be slightly compatible with things like SVG and other vector languages. Right. But okay. So what would you call this thing? I don't think we have anybody, any graphic design person in here. Uh, maybe we could find somebody and ask them what, what, does anybody know what it's called in that field? Andrea, could you see if Jeremy is around? Andrea? I can check, I can check. I'm, I tried to see Billy, but Billy's not around. Okay, all right. See if Jeremy Actually, <coughs> or Chris Prodi. Okay, I don't see Jeremy online either. Um, okay, but, but what we've got to invent is- I think name. they're called filled with patterns. Generally, we see that in a drawing tool too. You can yeah, I know. paint the surface with a pattern. <laughs> yep, I know that. Um, what could we call it? I mean, filling pattern is a, I mean, you've got hatching, and I guess the an analog of that will be pattern filling. But that's, you know, bah. I mean, texture is a word we've already used for something rather lame. Hatching, pattern filling. I guess pattern filling is the least bad of the things I'm seeing so far. Um, let's see, I'm just looking for... Uh, um, Oh, okay, good. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking. Okay, so in terms of what it contains here, I mean, all of the thetas and Rs is very is going to be very obscure. I think what you really need is a coarseness measure, 
Look, what are you really going to need for hatching? You need coarseness, which I think is important. And I think you need the pattern, the hatching pattern. Am I making sense? Yes. Of which cross hatching, you know, the default, I suppose, is one way hatching. Um, I mean, I, I could imagine left, right, things like that, cross hatching, herringbone. I, I think that's what that's called. I don't even know. I don't really know why it's called herringbone. I bet Roger knows because I bet they have herrings in, in Scandinavia. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I have my 10,000 weave patterns, and herringbone is one of them. Um, okay, we don't know why it's called that. Okay. Um, but, but anyway, so, I mean, you know, presumably we need these name things, and we need a coarseness parameter. Do you Wikipedia agree? says, so name for a fancied resemblance to the bones of a fish, such as herring. Oh, I see, because it goes two ways, right? Because across the spine of the fish, so to speak, the, the herring, the bones are... Yes, I understand. It's like many herring stuck to many herring skeletons where there's the the spine is in the middle of that. Okay, I get it. Um Stephen, Chris joined the meeting. Okay, good. Okay, hey Chris, we're talking about um uh cross hatching and filling patterns and so on. Mm -hmm. And we want to know where did I even have this? Did I just lose this? Um uh, just me. The the broken disc that was supposed to be one. I think that is bug. And the, okay, yes, fine. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay, Chris. What do you call a thing that like fills with random stuff? In um, uh, what what would you call that effect? I mean, like like some of these things we call cross hatching and so on. What would you call that effect? Whew, um. If I was in Photoshop and Illustrator, I would call it pattern fill. Uh, I'm not sure what I would call it besides. I, I, Have you seen so, anything other than that? Not for an arbitrary sort of like, yeah, obviously if it's like stripe, 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 I would call it hatching. But for sort of like an arbitrary polka dot fill, I'm not sure off the top of my head what I would call that as a generic thing. Okay. All right, fine. But But you're saying pattern fill is the typical thing. I believe so, okay. Yeah. All right. So look, I think we should we should start off for now, call it pattern filling. We should really get, I think Tim will be well equipped here, Roger and, and so on, to come up with a bunch of named, you know, hatching patterns and pattern fill. And so is hatching normally part of pattern filling? Mm -hmm. this is no. Oh. No. Who's saying yes? Who's saying no? Is Chris saying no? Is Chris saying yes? I was saying yes just because I'm used to no. it. Uh, we say no because it's more, I mean, when you do graphic design, when you lose at those like illustrator, it's just the way the, they build the hatching because they build it from a pattern feeling. I see. Okay. And here we want to emphasize, especially in this case, you know, the angle because it makes, you know, one case, one standard example we had was bar chart. Right. You have several bar, and then you want to have different hatching. And one advantage was to use the angle to you know, make the distinction. But it's not just the coarseness. There is, you know, those. No, I, I agree. I agree. Well, I don't know. We have to try it. I mean, maybe, and we need probably, as, I see. So what you've got here, I don't understand. Presumably, we could have, in general, a set of hatching lines at a certain angle, with a certain pitch at a certain angle, correct? Yes. I don't know whether it looks sensible for things other than 90 degree angles, does it? Or does it just look silly? It probably, no, it, it doesn't look sensible. I, I know what it looks like. I'll show you what it looks like because I've actually studied this for random reasons. Here, I'll show you something which, which makes it horrifying. I'm gonna have to go in a minute. Uh, okay. Should we go on with this or should we not go on with this, Roger? Um, I prefer we don't. And then we continue. I'll, I'll see if we can have it scheduled in to continue tomorrow, soon, tomorrow okay. and Thursday. i just like to point out to you, unfortunately, Thursday I'm on a plane some part of the day. I'd oh. just like to point out to you that that's what happens. It's Moire patterns. If you, if you go, um, sure. what's that? 
So this is this is hopeless for non, you know, uh, sort of irrational angles. It's just going to get totally hopeless. I mean, it's very amusing, but it's not going to be an effect that one wants. Um, uh, okay, let's, let's just have a quick look forward in this meeting agenda, if we could. Do we still need Chris here from design? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I I don't know what this this nearest mesh cells and things that I'm 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 sure they're wonderful. I'd really like to look at them. Um, what is this thing here? I don't quite understand what this is. It allows you to um, do geo compute. Uh, with a full geometry subsystem on geographic stuff. So if you have geographic coordinates in polygons, oh, I see what you're saying. Lines. So it's so not ordinary coordinates. These are coordinates in the Makita projection or something. Right. And there are two modes. This mode is you want to actually compute on the map. In the other case, you actually want to compute on the globe. So you could argue that that you're only interested in things on the map or you're only interested in things on the globe because things on the globe are the true things. But both are interesting. Okay, so this is geo position, oh, geo grid position, which is the mapping projected yes. projected position. Very nice. Okay, I'm sure this is going to be easy, this part. This is, I'm optimistic about this. Um, okay, supporting a bunch of new things here. Uh, Exporting to random man. Okay, fine. Web region search. Should we just have a quick look at that? So if I say web region search rhinoceros, for example, what's going to happen? You're going to get a rhinoceros. First, I'm going to get a bunch of rhinoceroses. Well, that particular Wi-Fi symbol is very odd. I would have thought we want dot, dot, dots, but... Okay, so there's. Okay, so let's pick one of those rhinos. That guy, for example. Click select first. No. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's uh, pick those two rhinos. And then Whoever paste. Said... Okay, I said copy paste. What the heck is this? It's a resource object. Resource object. You know, the, well, this thing called the rhinos I, I'm well aware of the resource system. Okay, <laughs> good. The, good. Okay, so are you telling me? So, so you've put lots of these. No, resource data on it. I see. So, in general, the way that resource system. That's a little odd, that interface, if I might say so. Is that going to be the mesh meshes? Um, yes, that's the default property. I think this interface is odd, and we should talk about it. I think we can make it smoother. And now the rhinoceros is kind of gumming up everything. Some rhinoceros are big. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> the, um, what the heck is it doing? Okay. Well, if you got you two rhinoceroses. But I don't see. Okay. Okay. So these are all licensing cleared objects that people can use. Is that true? Um, yes, the current repository. Okay. And how many do we have? How many have we... Because these come from our repository, is that right? Or, do, or are they coming from an API? Um, API. But it's being it's being fronted by our repository, is that correct? How, how does this no. work? No. no. No, so essentially we have a connection directly to the repository depending on the API. And so we can do the search and essentially we return a resource object which have a reference to that object on the external repository. No relation with our actual repository. Okay, so the fact that you've got a data repository icon there is irrelevant. That's yes, we, we, 
Yeah, I've been talking with um forget the name to actually fix that to change. We haven't yet managed to change. Okay, that. fine. But so this is a generic resource object whose content location is an external API. Exactly. Yep. And in the external API is some um, uh is this random rhinoceros. Um how absurdly non-G-rated is the stuff you can get here? Um, I don't think don't it's really too. Know. I don't I really know. Wait, Thingiverse, I don't think it's that. Thingiverse is one of the big collections. Um, okay. Well, I mean, I'm just, okay. And, and it's used plenty of places in education and so on. So yeah. Whatever yes. has happened. I don't, happened. I don't think, some of, another repository is NASA, and I don't think that they are putting yeah, out really bad stuff either. Right. And NIH, I don't think that they put no, it. No, fine. Really All right, okay, fine. So the answer to that is it's fine. Okay. Um, uh, although we might want to check if any of those uh, things I'm are in parameters. Like, I am. I am. Okay. 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 All right. I see you, Roger, but we'll continue a little bit without you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So... Well, I mean, what I, what can I typically do with these things? Are they are they too big to to handle, or are they typically of a reasonable size? And do we have any constraint on that? And do we downsample at all? Uh, we don't downsample. They usually have a decent size. Most of them are three D printable. So, so what? I mean, this one. Look in the front end here. This one is gumming up all over the place, right? I mean, I'm not. I'm having a hard time pasting this in the front end. Someone is yes. complaining on our live stream that this is going to end up dead like financial data. Actually, that's about to come back to life again. We apologize for the interruption, but much of it has already come back to life for financial data, and all of it is coming back very soon. Um, yes, it is a big nuisance dealing with a supply chain for some of these assets. Um, and it's much better when we control the whole supply chain. But that's not the way the world works. Um, okay, but, but my question is, I mean, look, I'm, oh my gosh, well, it's a very detailed rhinoceros, but I mean, it seems implausible that I can do anything to this. Like, for example, if I try and take that, what would be an example of something I could do here? Take the bounding circumsphere of this or something. Is that something I could, well, what's an operation I can do on this? Let's, let me um, even just do volume, or will the volume be zero? Is it volume or area? Uh, the volume would probably be zero. Oh. See, look at this. I mean, I can't even type here. John, do you want to comment on this? Well, something very strange is going on because it pushed it right off the screen, which I don't have an explanation for. The rhinoceros was afraid. Uh, but, yeah, in general, that's uh, that's an issue we could do better on, yes. But is it, I mean... What type of thing is needed to solve that problem? I mean, I'm just wondering, okay, fine. So you can compute stuff on this. I mean, when we have more functionality of in geometry, for example, we can downsampling it before we actually decide to render it. So it's all the stuff we can. We I would have thought that what should happen here for this, for most applications of this, is that we should downsample like crazy. Because... Most things, I mean, you know, and have an option here, and I hate the term web region search, I just hate it. Um, I think it should be geometry, and I think we should subcase the geometry. But I think that, um, uh, you know, basically what should happen is that just like, let me give you an analogy. In web image search, we are basically returning thumbnails by default, because that's what people, that's what is typically wanted. I mean, if I go, I mean, we, we, I think it already in 12.1, that's what's happening. I mean, if I go web image search, um, rhinoceros, so let's see what it does. See, I mean, we could return full scale images, but they would have all kinds of restrictions and it will be hard to deal with, but we're actually returning thumbnails. See what I'm saying? And that's more useful. So I think we should do the same thing here. And, and have some special way of getting the full image, you know, full region, full mesh or something. Does that make sense, Charles? 
Um, yes, but you want us to return the image or the mesh first. I mean, oh no, the mesh, the, the mesh, the mesh. But just the downsample mesh. I mean, yes. how difficult is it to downsample one of these meshes? Um, not really, but we don't yet have that functionality. We don't have any function to downsample yet. Right. I mean, the, okay. So. Bob is commenting that the 3D rotation of this looked really slow, and it does seem really slow. And why is it slow? Why is this not? This is a Yusu question. Why is this uh, not? I think there's a lot of polygon yeah. there. If if you click on it and you look at the attached cell, there's probably a lot of guys. Which one do we look uh, the, at? The last one, the information. How many polygons do you think there are here? Oh, probably thousands, million. Million. Yep. Yusu yeah, is one, correct. 1.3 1. 1. million polygons. Okay, so that's an absurd thing to have put into, you know, so it's not surprising that this is slow. So Yusu, you, you believe that this is getting state-of-the-art performance in terms of rotation, given that uh, it has 1.3 million I, polygons. I, I think the, the, what you observed on screen, there's bug there. And uh, currently the prototype is using a new drawing layer, which is a meta on Mac. So it's it's we are still experimenting that. So there there are some bugs there, but okay. uh, I, yeah. Maybe if you copy, can you copy it? Maybe and paste it in twelve. I think in twelve we are reaching four millions decently. I think. Okay. So okay. Okay. Um, okay. By the way, John, I continue to see that bug where sometimes, like one out of four times, when I copy an image, I'm not getting, you know, only when the when I refocus the window does it actually go in there. Did you did you find that bug finally? Um, to be honest, I'm not remembering that bug. Okay, so remember when if you do a screen capture, for example, okay. The, and then you the, said, the, the last discussion I remember you're talking about was something coming out the wrong size. No, that was a different discussion. That was in 12.1. Okay, okay, so here we go. This is a great example. I've got a screen capture in my mouse. Okay. Mm -hmm. I press Command V. Nothing mm -hmm. happens. Right. Now I go, you told me this trick. I go here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yes. I yeah, go there that's... and it suddenly pastes. Yeah. 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 I remember what you're talking about now. What is that? I mean, we got to find that bug. Um, well, the issue is that uh, um, is that the front end is not being properly notified about somebody else changing the clipboard because uh, because there was no focus change and it kind of uh, was latching onto the focus change on in terms of the Mac implementation. So I see. So when screen capture happens. And it didn't, there was no focus change associated with the screen capture. It exactly. doesn't know that the, okay, that at least explains it. Yeah. Um, so, so, it's so it's a bug that can only happen basically with that, uh, with the built-in screen capture. Wow. I wish you told me that years ago when I first saw this bug. Okay. Well, that at least explains it, but c can we fix it? I'm... I think so. I think so. It's just that I'm, I'll be honest. I'd kind of forgotten about it. I okay. So Andrea, it, this is another. It, thing it, it, it is a filed issue. issue. I know, but I okay. think it just got lost in the you know you know in working on a bunch of the other Mac stuff. Okay, so I want to know about this rhinoceros because I'm I'm moving. I'm trying to move it. Why why is it changing size? I just moved my mouse down. Why why is it zooming the thing? Yutsu. Look, look at that. I click it and the look at it. It's I, my my fingers are off the mouse. It look it look it looks like some kind of failure of tail rotation. Do you agree, you two? Right, it looks like uh something wrong. Yeah, it should be I, I will fix that. Okay, do you need this particular rhinoceros? You can go find it yourself, I think. You, okay, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just take yeah. a screen capture of where it was. I'm not going to send you the whole thing because it's, it's too big. Just take yeah. a screen capture of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oops, sorry, I closed it. I covered it. Um, okay, but but so 
So the answer is with 1.2 million polygons, it is rotating reasonably into oil. Apart from the silly bug, I mean, that's very nice. That's very nice, smooth rotation. I'm very impressed. Apart from the silly sizing bug. Um, yeah, and so to be clear, this is the legacy OpenGL renderer, which, you know, isn't really moving because Apple stopped doing anything with it. But uh, the metal renderer, which we're working on, it's not fully optimized yet, but once it is, it should be faster. Did you tell me... You, you were telling me earlier, and I think we didn't finish that conversation about this Vulcan thing. You're saying that's that's poorly developed so far? The so-called cross, so claimed cross-platform rendering layer. Did you already explain that? Go ahead. Sorry, I, I'm not sure exactly what which cross-platform rendering layer you're referring to. This thing called Vulcan? Oh, 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 no, no, no. It's, it's so... Vulcan is, I mean, it's basically the, you know, kind of open GL, the next generation. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's the same people who are working on it, basically saying, well, if we started over today and didn't have a legacy to carry on, how would we design a system? Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, the issue with us is that we have limited resources and four different uh, 3D rendering layers out yeah, there. Yeah, that's crazy. Right. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, Direct3D was non-negotiable because that's that's really all that Windows wants to deal with. You can do OpenGL, but it performs terribly. And recently, you know, Apple has made no official statement about OpenGL, but their <laughs> unofficial statement is, Hey, look, the same version of OpenGL has been in the last four versions of the operating system. So pretty right. clear what statement they're making there. Okay, so let me make a suggestion about this uh, this web region search thing. Okay, so uh, you're saying you're saying that it is difficult for us to downsample this creature. Is that correct? That we don't have the Charles, we, you were saying we don't have the technology to do downsampling at this time. Yes, for this version. Yeah. Well, how far away is downsampling? It seems like a hard problem. Uh, as far as I know, not really. Okay. In general, there's there's well known algorithm for that, so we can we can use. All right. Listen, putting this in is going to just blow everything up. So the one thing I can imagine is you could pre-select when you actually are doing the search for which things to show here for ones that have low polygon count. See what I'm saying? I mean, you've got um, some ranking here. The ranking is kind of random. One, one, one issue essentially is that you don't really know if it has polygon card, you know, the, the, the size of the object on, until you download it. Right? And there is that cost. Isn't that metadata? Uh, no. Really? And Isn't there a the file size? It no, it depends on the repository and, you know, whatever they want to provide. Okay, but I bet you could you could do something which even before is it a web download? You can probably figure out the file size before you web download it. Um, not sure about it, but yeah, we can try. That's what I would do because I mean this is just going to mess everything up. People are going to try this; it's going to fail. They're going to get things with eight million polygons in them, which are magnificent and reproduce every you know hair on the nose of the rhinoceros and things, but blow their systems up, right? which just isn't very useful. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I feel strongly about doing something like that. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know how quickly you could get a downsampling algorithm working, but one or, one or other of those things has got to happen. I mean, it may also be that downsampling is quite slow. Yes. Well, we'll try... We'll try to see what we can do. Okay. So. Uh, somebody is asking whether the renderers that we saw would work. Okay, I got to try it, but I cannot believe this will work. If this works, I'll be just incredibly impressed. Am I going to be impressed or am I going to be, is it going to be a total splat here? I can't even paste the, the poor rhinoceros. So what, what would I do here? I would say stipple. If it could only type here, will it help if it goes to a new line? No, whatever. 
oh my gosh, this is like this is like typing on a acoustic coupled modem <laughs> thing back in the nineteen seventies. Yeah, sorry, we can we can do better. Does stipple shading take any arguments or is it just open close? Does stipple shading take arguments, please? Um, I think the it can work with no argument. I probably need to go a graphic 3D. So. Yeah, okay. I'm just doing predictive typing here. I mean, I just, I typed several seconds ago. It's good, you know, we developed those skills back how many years ago. It's always good to know. It's just like when I was a kid, I learned to type on a typewriter with one finger because of I wasn't strong enough to type with all fingers on a typewriter. And then eventually cell phones came along and then it was useful to know how to type with one finger. Well, amazingly, that actually worked. That well done, Yutsu. Look at that. We got a stippled rhinoceros. What do you know? Okay. Is it even going to have any chance of saving this file with with all those millions of polygons in it? It it will save, but it will take a while, and and it would uh, uh, it might hang up the front end while it's saving. So just be aware of that. Okay. Um. All right. Down sampling, uh, Bob on our live stream is commenting would also be useful in making computer games. Yeah, I mean, down sampling really seems like a very useful thing to have. Um. Oh. Did that successfully save? What do you know? Worked better than we expected. Okay. All right. Uh, is there anything else we can usefully cover here without Roger? Um, I don't think we can look at this right now. This has clearly got to come back for another review. Um, uh, yeah, and... and um, uh, Um, yes, but when I was typing before, it was re-rendering the rhinoceros every time I typed a key. And the, the, I agree, the stippled one appears to be rotating faster than the unstippled one. Is that surprising to anybody? Uh, it's using OpenGL. Be uh, because I see, I see. So this is the un unoptimized metal being yeah. used for this case, and this is using the optimized OpenGL. Yeah, right. Because, right, because right now the shaders are only implemented in OpenGL. So that's another can of worms. Is that going to be difficult to re-implement all these shaders in, in Metal as well? Uh, it might some need some work, but it's, a, it's not that difficulty. Okay. So listen, we are going to need to review these some more. I'm, I guess I am reluctantly, partially... I mean, some of these I don't have a problem with. Stippling, I think that's easy to understand. I don't know why hatch shading... It's a little weird that it's hat shading and then hatching. When we do I mean, dashing. What's that? Because of dashing, hatching, dashing for the 2D. No, no, that's nice for 2D. Um, and shading is, after all, also a... Um, oh, what are those things called? Oh, my gosh. What is a word that ends in ing called? What is the part of the the verb inflection of the verb called? Yeah, it starts with a g. Gerund? It's is not it the there? gerund. No, it's yeah. not the gerund. The gerund is something different. Okay, I don't feel quite as bad, except that I spent too much of my life doing linguistic stuff. I should know this. Um, okay, anything else for right now? Nope. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. Lots of nice stuff. And thank you to folks on the live stream. Good comments. Much appreciated. All right. See you all soon.